At this point, we're going to now work over into the timesheets so that you can see the timesheets the way that the, the area managers see the timesheets. So like Marco, um, Darren will see these sometimes. You're going to see the timesheets the way that they look at it after you guys have put the information in to look at. So when they go in, they have a validation page where they validate timesheets and they say, yeah, that's right, yeah, that's right, that's, that's right. So here's a timesheet. We'll look at it. Um, a little tip. These numbers here will actually, or these, these, in, this information here will change to different colors based on whether or not it matches closely to what the calculated amount is or not. These ones are gray, which means that they're probably pretty close to what was calculated. The contractor got on site there and maybe it called for 23 pounds, so he put down 25. Big deal. Maybe it said 98 pounds or 95 pounds and they put down 100. Not a big deal. But yeah, this is correct. This, this timesheet basically should be approved and then pushed on. There's nothing wrong with this time sheet, it's perfectly fine. Okay, now on this next one, we've got the same site. Uh, temperature is a little bit different this time. Um, snowfall was two and a half inches. Their snow removal activities were zero to four and two to four, which fits with the snowfall, right? Mm -hmm. But we've got this yellow amount up here One says 25 pounds, the other one says 100 pounds. Parking lot's 100, sidewalk is 25, and they're yellow. Seems kind of low. Well, one, yeah, and, and, and these will come up a different color whether or not it's <coughs> lower than it what should be or higher. So it's going both ways because the ideal is to hit kind of what's calculated for that site. So they're yellow. What are you gonna, are you gonna call the service partner or not? They also included a note, hey, drain from the next door freezing on the site. So you, you know you're getting some moisture onto your site that you're just not accounted for in any of the snowfall, right? Right. So they're putting down, maybe they're putting down some extra de-icer because there's a lot of water moving through. Draining. Would you call them? Uh, probably not because they have a good, good comment on there. Okay. And I agree. I agree. That's, you know what? Yeah, it doesn't fit with what's calculated, but that's okay. It's still, um, it's still, they've got the comments to tell you why. Mm -hmm. So everything's fine. There's, there's no reason to kick that one back. So now, let's look at this next one. What do you see here that uh, everything's the same except that these are now red and there's no comment. And red means that it's considerably different. I didn't change the actual, actual numbers, but. Red means that it's considerably different from what the calculated amount was. So what are you going to do? There's no comment there to tell you why. I'll probably have to make a phone call. And probably have to make a phone way. call. So in this situation, the, the one thing that would make it so that he wouldn't make a phone call or kick this back and say, hey, the DIC, because when you not approve something, you're going to say DIC material is significantly higher or lower, it should say, than calculated. No comments to indicate why. It's basically, we're not saying you're wrong. We're not saying it's not didn't need to happen. We're just saying, hey, we've got to we've got to have some reason why this is, even if it's just a quick, hey, a lot of extra site ice on the site that needed to be managed, a lot of extra runoff from next door, a lot of extra puddles in the parking lot that, you know, duck ponds or whatever they call them that fill up with water and then freeze. Those are significant amount uh, amounts of ice that need to be dealt with. And a lot of times when it's ice. The only way to deal with it is to put ice melt down. So yeah, this one you'd kick back and you just say, hey, what, what happened there? Um, again, we're not saying anybody's wrong. We just need to make sure that the, the documents are accurate. So now on this last one, so big ugly site. We've got our temperatures and our snowfall is at 3.5 inches. Our ice melt sidewalk on the sidewalk is two and a half pounds. And the best stuff that we used was a thousand pounds that went down on the parking lot. There's no comment. And we also have this snow removal parking lot six plus inches, but we have snow removal sidewalks zero to four, and then we reported 3.5 inches of snowfall. What would you do, Marco? I'll probably have to reject it and add a note on there because it's just it, it looks like a typo. Someone could yeah, a yeah. Typo. Maybe one of the guys was hitting the zero too many times on the. Right. It's supposed to be 100 pounds and not a thousand, you know, a thousand pounds, and maybe this is supposed to be 25 pounds, and they accidentally hit the the decimal point. 
Um, this one here might be that they thought they hit the other one. I mean, it's just, mistakes happen in the field, and we get that. This is part of our ISO to make sure that we're validating what's coming through, that we're, we're ensuring that the, the documents that we're creating are correct. So, yeah, this one would have to be, this would have to be kicked back, mm -hmm. and you would basically just say the deicer material is significantly higher or lower. And then it, it also notes here service depths um, and reported snowfall are inconsistent. So it's just making them, was it 3.5 inches or was it 5.5 inches, and the snow removal on the sidewalk is in. We don't know. Go ahead. As Steve said, you know, lots of times we're not saying somebody's wrong or did anything wrong, but we need to make sure that these notes and these records are as accurate as possible. If we get into any kind of a lawsuit, they're not just going to look at the timesheet for that site that happens. They're going to look at multiple sites. And if their lawyers can prove that, hey, 12% of these guys' records are bogus, they're going to throw all of our records out. That means everybody losing money. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the more accurate that we are, the more that our records indicate that we're doing what's supposed to be happening on the sites, we're performing the way that we need to, we're meeting our clients' expectations, and they're, they're happy, they're satisfied with what we're doing. So, and that's what we're hoping to do here with a lot of our clients, is to work them in more of a partnership as opposed to just this transactional kind of services that they're, that they're buying. So just to recap then, we're really focused, the focus of this is to meet the client expectations, understand what those expectations are, and that comes back to knowing those specifications, making sure that your guys understand the specifications, the guys that are on site performing the services, they need to know what those specifications are as well. Really, in the end, documentation is what's needed for us to be able to show our clients to get paid. Um, documentation is what's needed in order to protect us liability-wise. Accurate documentation is just absolutely vital. We can't not have accurate documentation. That's where our biggest liability is, is if we've got the information, we've got timesheets, we've got everything else that's being put into GM Square just isn't right. And if it's not right, then, then how do we know what's happening? How do we know what to bill for? So, and how do we protect ourselves in the case of a, of a slip and fall? And that's, that's really, we're being held liable for those slip and falls because they want us to do the work, so let's make sure that our documentation is correct in order to, to uh, protect ourselves. Um, see, the question I have a lot of is of what kind of pictures do our service partners expect us to take when they get there? How many pictures? So, do you want to talk a little bit more about what we're expecting? So, so on the pictures, uh, images are probably one of the best things that was, we've worked with some of the consultants that we've worked with over the last little bit. They're expert witnesses in, in court cases that make it into court. Simple images of as far back as you, if you pull up to the site before you pull in, take a picture of the entire parking lot with all the snow on it or with all the ice on it or whatever it is. If there's specific areas that show a lot of ice and you're putting down a lot of ice melt, a quick couple snapshots of that ice, the puddles that are frozen over, the chunks of ice that are you know, across the parking lot the drainage that's coming from a next door lot that's just draining into your parking lot that you're maintaining. All of those things, all of those images help to support that, hey, we were there, we saw all of this, and we put down extra ice melt than what was calculated because we're trying to manage it, and yeah, we're doing what's reasonably expected. Because that's ultimately what it comes down to. Are you doing what's reasonably expected to keep a site safe? When you're leaving the site and you've done some work, um, Take another quick snapshot of the work that was done. Uh, it'll those those photos. They're they're stamped with the date and time that they're taken when they're uploaded. So all of those are there. It, it indicates that you were on site at that time. So last year, because of how much snow we got, I got to the point where I was like, every picture looked the same. I was like, <laughs> it's really, I mean that that's just how I personally felt. So I wasn't required. So but you're saying it is better. To go ahead and just go ahead and take them, upload them. Doesn't matter yep. that they all look the same. Doesn't matter that they all look the same. In fact, if they all look the same when you leave and the site's nice and clear and nice, but all of them have different dates that show that you were there, right. that's the key. It's yeah. it's showing. Oh yeah, here's the photo and here's the date. Yeah, we were there that morning. We did what was expected on the contract. We we fulfilled and serviced that site. What more can we do? And that's really what it comes down to. There's not much more that you can do if you're fulfilling the the specifications for the contract, you're doing what's reasonably expected, then 
for protecting. And then finally, we'd just like to say thank you to all of you for the hard work that you